For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Welcome, everybody. Today we have uh, two great speakers um, here on our conversation with the county. Uh, but before we move into the speakers, we're, we're going to do an uh, update as to what um, we are experiencing here in the county in general. Um, but before we move into our presentation, I just want to take the time to take a deep breath. Um, if you all can join me at the count of three um, and take a deep breath. One, two, three. Thank you. Um, I know some of us are moving on from helping with homework to preparing dinner um, during work hours in between. So important to take a mindful pause um, to move on to our, our next um, item here. So let's go ahead and um, move into our presentation to give an update um, in our county uh, in regards to COVID-19. Um, our vaccines. So um, if we can move to the next slide. Just as we know, and we hear this over and over, but it's, it's important to rinse and repeat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through them. Stay indoor, stay outdoors, sorry, continue to stay outdoors, even though some of us might have the first and or the second doses of the vaccines, it's still important to stay outdoors. Stay masked. So continue to wear your mask. Maintain at least a six feet distance from others. Avoid crowds, get vaccinated. And then this week, uh, we opened up a new uh, area for individuals um, eligible to receive vaccines in our county. So individuals ages 16 to 64 with high risk conditions, including cancer, chronic kidney disease, stage four or above, chronic pulmonary disease, oxygen dependent, Down syndrome, solid organ transplant with weakened immune system, pregnancy, sickle cell disease, heart failure, coronary artery disease, or cardiomyopathesis, sorry, um, but not hypertension, severe ob obesity, and type two diabetes. Um, and th this list is subject to change uh, in the coming weeks, but um, currently that's who uh, we've added to the eligible, uh, the list of eligible of people able to get the vaccine now. And as we know, workers in the food and agriculture departments, workers in the education and childcare, emergency services, workers who cannot practi uh, practically work from home and then residents ages 65 and older. And then just want to review the cases and vaccination rates by race and ethnicity. Um, some of you might have heard this, uh, but it's important to understand that we continue to be those impacted the most by COVID-19. So um, when I say we, uh, the Latino, Hispanic, Chicano, Mexican community, um, as we know, especially in the east side and Gilroy parts of our county, um, east side of San Jose and Gilroy, uh, have been impacted the, the highest by COVID-19. And so if we see on the left, the cases by race and ethnicity, we make approximately 25% of the population in the county. Um, however, we make over 50% of the cases of the positive COVID-19 cases in the county. So um, just to repeat that, we only make approximately 25% of uh, the population in our county, but we make over 50% of those being infected with COVID-19. So that's almost a double um, of those being infected with um, affected with COVID-19. Um, and so those numbers are high. Uh, just pay attention. You know, it's important to, to, to me, be mindful. And we know that there's many factors for this happening in our communities, right? Some of us share um, our homes with others, multi-generational homes. Some of us live with our grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts, um, and families. Um, some of us are frontline workers. 
Um, some of, I mean, there's different factors, so we get it. And um, therefore also it's important to also acknowledge and, and find out what's happening in the vaccination rate um, as our um, vaccinations um, total, we only make up 13% of those being um, uh, vaccinated. So, so the total population of our Hispanic, Chicano, Latino, uh, Mexican communities, um, the, the, there's 83% of our community that is not being vaccinated. Only 13% of our community is being vaccinated. So we need to be mindful if we still haven't gotten our vaccine, make sure when it's our turn that we get signed up to get it, um, that we support our elders, that we support those that are uh, now eligible to get it, to be able to walk them walk them to, through that process. With Santa Clara County, we are having a call center um, as well that uh, for now it's been bi biweekly for a couple of weeks now. And so um, we're going to be advertising that, be on the lookout in our um, Facebook pages as to when we're going to have those call centers. So we will have somebody um, answering phone calls, walking people through the process of how to get a vaccination appointment. Um, and it's also important to acknowledge that um, not everybody um, right now, there's not enough appointments, um, there's not enough vac vaccines available. Our county, um, unfortunately, is receiving, has received less. So the allotment that we currently have, we are saving um, most of them for those who are getting their second vaccine. So um, those appointments um, aren't as available right now for the first doses of vaccine, um, but know that we're doing everything we can in order to get more. And so just a reminder in regards to the documents needed in order to get the vaccine. Um, so you will be uh, asked to sign a document under penalty of perjury, confirming that you meet the eligibility requirements um, and bring a document showing that you are 65 or above, a resident of a long-term care facility, that you live in Santa Clara or that you are eligible because you work in healthcare, education, and childcare, emergency services, and food, agriculture. And now, as we just added, um, or a letter from the doctor saying that, um, you know, you, you fall under that new criteria that I just read earlier. Um, and so the county also understands that some individuals do not have an updated photo ID, or might not have a pay stub, um, stub or paperwork that might document this. So, um, just look on, on our site for, for um, a list of other things that can help you. And if you don't have any, um, you will be asked to sign that um, document under the penalty of perjury, which should be sh sufficient to get your vaccine. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests um, here today. Uh, we have Dr. Gerardo Solorio Cortez, who graduated from George Washington School of Medicine. He completed his residency in internal medicine at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. He is currently the primary care physician at Valley Health Center in Gilroy and is the current physician at the Gilroy High School vaccination site. His professional interests are decreasing barriers to access to healthcare, including vaccination rates in underserved communities. And we also have Julie Ramirez, who is a uh, manager in our uh, current isolation and quarantine support program. She has been with the county since 2011, working on issues that impact women, girls, and families. First with the Office of the Women's Policy and now as a senior management analyst at our Office of Gender-Based Violence Prevention and Division and Equity and Social Justice. Currently, as I mentioned, Julie is activated as a disaster service worker and is a manager of the isolation and quarantine support program. Welcome, Dr. Solorio Cortez and Julie Ramirez. Um, and so what we'll do, just to guide you a little bit um, of our process, uh, we're going to have Julie do a presentation as to um, some of the resources and services through her office, and then we will open it up for questions and answers um, with both of them here, or all three of us. 
Um, so if you already start, or if you have some questions already in mind, feel free to start putting them and listing them. Um, otherwise, as we go, uh, we're, we will open it up for questions and answers towards the end of our um, event today. So welcome, Julie, and we'll go ahead and open it up to your presentation. Thank you, Corina. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to share this valuable resource with the community. This program called the Isolation and Quarantine Support Program is designed to help folks who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 or have been exposed to COVID-19 and been to they've been told they need to stay home. So the county, along with some participating cities in the county, recognize that that's not easy to do. So that's why this program has come to fruition. So today, I just want to briefly tell you a little bit more about the program. I want to tell you the services that we offer, who's eligible, and how you can apply. Next slide. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So what is the um, isolation and quarantine support program? Well, we provide the services to help you stay home if you test positive or if you're exposed. We provide financial or rental assistance. We provide um, grocery delivery or supply delivery to your home if you are isolating or quarantining. Or if you find that you don't have a place to safely isolate or quarantine, then we can provide you with a hotel placement. Um, next slide. So who's eligible for this survey, uh, this service? Anyone who not only has been positive or has had that exposure, but has lost income as a result of that. In other words, you weren't able to work. If you weren't able to work because you were sick, then you may, um, you, you'll meet the first criteria. You also have to be <clears throat> a resident in Santa Clara County and in one of the participating cities that I'll review shortly. And then this program is designed for families who um, have the total family income at or below 80% AMI. So it's designed for low income families. I do want to emphasize, however, that all residents who, who are experiencing homelessness are eligible for this program. And all persons residing in unincorporated Santa Clara County are eligible for this program. And the immigration status of an individual does not matter. We do not ask that. Next slide. Here are the participating cities. So you can see that um, there, are, there are several cities within the county that offer all three of those services that I discussed previously. And there are some um, cities within the county that only offer hotel, for example. Gilroy is one of them. If um, you were unsure whether or not your city qualifies, I would recommend that you just call our hotline and then we'll discuss these um, eligibility factors with you. Next slide. Let me talk a little bit about the financial and, and rental assistance and, and what's the difference. Um, they both mean that you will receive cash to take care of your basic needs. However, with the financial assistance, um, you would qualify for $2,000 for one individual. If there are two income earners in your family that meet the criteria that I discussed, then the maximum um, that we can help you with is $2,500. And the client can spend this money on any necessary any necessities that they deem fit on the other hand uh, if your need is specific to rental assistance and we all know how expensive that is um, a person may qualify for assistance up to five thousand dollars for one month rent and utilities this check though goes directly to the landlord not the client and we require some documentation from the landlord, such as the W-9. The process is a little lengthier. It requires a little bit more documentation, for example, a lease agreement on behalf of the client, but because of the increased dollar amount that you may qualify for, this might be the right path for you if you need that extra subsidy. Um, clients 
are, are allowed to email or text their documents. Um, and we want to emphasize that the income that you get if as part of this program is not taxable, it does not have to be recorded um, on your income tax return and um, you don't have to pay it back. So um, again, the county recognizes that this is a crisis and they're there to help our residents get through it. And one means is through financial or rental assistance. Next slide. Uh, quickly, what are the documents that you might need to um, supply if you want to receive assistance? We tried to streamline it and make it as accessible as possible, very similar to the vaccines like what Ina was describing earlier. We require a type of identification, one uh, photo ID, one that shows that your address is within Santa Clara County. However, if your ID does not show that you have a residence in Santa Clara County, show us in another way. So like a bill would be an acceptable form of that um, identification. If um, in addition, I should say, in addition, we need to understand that you have lost income as a result of your circumstance and, and um, COVID diagnosis or exposure. So we will um, accept a self-certification that is signed and dated by yourself. And in fact, we have uh, we will provide a, a template to make it simpler for our, our residents to do that. Next slide. One question that we always get asked is, is this uh, assistance limited to one house or our the, our multiple households. And there's a difference, right? We understand that in Silicon Valley, we're in a housing crisis among all the other challenges that we face. And multiple families live within one dwelling. So it is possible for multiple families who reside at one address to both qualify. However, they need to each meet those qualifying um, eligibility factors that I described earlier. And we will discuss this one-on-one um, -on -one with the client in very detailed uh, manner to, to uh, decipher whether it is one household or two households. But I do wanna make it clear that if multiple families live in one house, it is possible for all of them to receive the help. Next slide. How long will it take for you to get assistance? Well, once you submit your application, we have a staff of more than 50 IQ coordinators who will, um, one of them will respond to you within 24 hours. They will call if you leave a phone number, email, call, even text to um, figure out a time for you all to communicate uh, in real time. And they'll give at least three attempts before they close the case. If your case is closed because you somehow missed their, maybe you're, you're sick, for example, maybe you weren't up to talking and they called you and you just couldn't get the energy to take that phone call, um, you may call us back when you're feeling better and we'll reopen your case. And in the end, the client will receive assistance within seven to 10 days. Um, so that's, that's our goal. Next slide. How do you get a hold of us? Um, well, we have a hotline number that is staffed seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you call after hours, you may leave a recording in any language that you are comfortable in. We have a very diverse staff. And in addition, we have the ability to connect with a language line. So you can leave a message and we will speak to you in your preferred language. Um, there's an additional uh, hotline that is for um, homeless residents that may need support ongoing, and that's um, what we call the JDOC hotline. It's a, a, a joint operations center, and that hotline is below, and it's just an additional resource. Right now, what I'm talking about is the one on the top, the 408-808-7770. That is the hotline to the Santa Clara County Isolation and Quarantine Support Program. Next slide. 
If you call us and we determine that, unfortunately, you are not eligible for our program, we will do our best to connect you with other resources. And in fact, these resources are available on the county resource uh, on the county website for you to explore and study as well and determine what um, needs um, you may be able to get assisted with and what resources are out there. So I just wanted to promote the COVID-19 resource directory on the county website. And if you go to secgov.org and search resource directory, you will find it, or there's a specific link at the bottom of the slide if you can take time to um, make note of that longer URL. And lastly, um, get to the next slide, please. Lastly, this is just our information. My name is on there. I am one of four managers for the program that is there to um, oversee the activity. We have a staff of more than 50 INQ coordinators who are there to talk directly with the community, make sure that you're getting the needs that um, your needs met during the difficult time of either being COVID positive or being exposed and being challenged, facing those challenges of um, financial, um, financial or rental crises. We're here to help. Corina. Great. Thank you so much, Julie, for all that information. And uh, we look forward to um, having you be available to answer any questions that the community might have. Um, and so with that, without further ado, I'll go ahead and open it up. Like I mentioned, we do have Dr. Gerardo Solorio Cortez here as well, helping answer um, specific questions around the vaccinations. And then you heard Julie Ramirez in her wonderful presentation about the specific resources around isolation and quarantine here in our county. So we're gonna go ahead and move over to our questions and answer period. Um, and I'm just gonna go down the list as I see them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Yael Sedbar. And the question is, we hear many eligible people hunting for vaccines and need to drive far to far counties like Moscon Center. What's happening with Santa Clara's stock? So as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, we got a lower stock and um, in this period. And really, things can change on a daily basis, sometimes hourly. And so um, currently our, our stock as a county has been less. So we are saving the first vaccines to those that are getting their second dose. Um, so we're not opening up for first vaccines right now. Um, and we're also directing those that have other insurance such as Kaiser. We're directing those to go to Kaiser, um, so on and so forth to their, their other insurances so that they can get vaccinated. Um, so unfortunately, we haven't received as many vaccines as we wanted. Um, again, you know, they're, they're, they're provided to us um, from the state. And so they are going, my understanding is that they're going to other counties um, that quote unquote um, needed that number the most. Um, and then Dr. Solorio Cortez, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add to that. No, I mean, I, I pretty much, you know, frustration of, um, of our, you know, community members. And it's pretty much, pretty much just a wait and see what the state, you know, or, you know, or federal government you know, sends us. And it's a pretty much a, a, a weekly um, waiting, you know, the waiting game and see what, what we get, you know, what, uh, how many, how many vaccines, and then, you know, what types. So it's, um, it's pretty much that. And I, I, I totally understand the frustration. And I'll just say, you know, hang in there. I mean, just reading the news and you know, listening to the, the politicians, you know, uh, President Biden. Um, it sounds like they want to uh, ramp up more as we move forward into the you know, months of you know, late March, April. So I, I just, you know, keep the hope of that. You know, they do. Um, increase the 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 amount mm -hmm. thank you um and then we have Lori Reynois who mentions heart conditions so I, i'm assuming uh, i think it was right after the presentation that i listed heart conditions yeah and yes it's yeah, a very good I'll, I'll take this question um yeah thank you i mean the pretty much 
by heart conditions, they mean cardiac disease, cardiomyopathy, meaning like heart failure. So if your doctor or provider has um, told you that you have that condition, you know, again, going back to congestive heart failure or um, cardiac myopathy, muscle disease of the, of the heart, then by definition, you do meet criteria on, on this tier. Thank you. Um, and then we have from Michelle Watson, who also asked what is going on with the vaccine supply. I think we just answered. Thank you so much. Steve Shepard uh, um, says San Francisco has widened the BMI eligibility to uh, less than 30 and San Diego to less than 25. Does Santa Clara County plan to widen the eligibility? I mean, so I'm, I, I don't know the details, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a good question to ask um, you know, our public health um, officials to see if we could do that. I think that's a valid question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I again, I haven't heard the answer to that specific question, but that that is that is a good question. And then we have Brenda Debrum Grims who asks, "When are we getting vaccine?" So it might be from the answers that we gave earlier. We're hoping soon. Um, or where can we get them? Lori Ann Segovia asks, where can we get them? I can answer that, uh, Dr. Solorio uh, Cortez. So um, we have various pl places throughout the county. Um, I know, for example, Dr. Solorio Cortez is stationed at Gilroy High School. And in Gilroy, that's one of the places where um, you can access the vaccine. Uh, I know here in San Jose, for example, we have um, our Emmanuel Baptist Church who's providing vaccines. Uh, we also recently opened up uh, the Eastridge on the roller rink uh, skating um, location there. So there's different locations throughout. We also have some mobile sites that are mobile uh, in the community. And so there is a list on uh, our website, but we're also being mindful of the lack of vaccines that we have right now as well. So we wanna make sure that when we make an announcement that we have en enough vaccines to meet the need. And so know that those might change day to day and um, the announcements will go out or, you know, if, they're, if you show up for some of the ones that were walking, you might find a sign at the door that says no vaccines available today. So just be mindful of that. You know, we get to be patient, but know that um, as leaders, I know that um, they're being very vocal in um, making sure that we get what we need here in Santa Clara County. And I would, add? Mm -hmm. I would just add that, um, you know, healthcare systems like Kaiser or even, you know, Stanford, they'll, uh, and, and, and us too, Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, um, our um, health and, and county system, the, uh, the my, uh, their um, patient portal systems, their, their are being sent messages when they meet criteria for that tier. So I would say, you know, pay attention to those messages if you get them on your patient portal. Portal. Um, I would also encourage you to maybe have maybe have a talk with your healthcare provider and see um, um, if they, you know, uh, or if they have any leads on where where to go, how to get signed up. And of course, our, the websites that we have through the county is, I think, the 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 uh, one the best point point per point uh, place where you could go for the latest um, information on um, if you're uh, if you meet criteria for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have Lori Renois who asks Latino home cleaners living on the east side of San Jose. Um, I'm assuming if they're eligible to get um, the vaccine. Um, and if it's not that question, please continue to put your question and put it the right way. Um, so right now, as far as I know, as a public information officer, is um, not yet, as they're not essential employees. Um, and so, you know, as we know, some are uh, lucky enough to have people cleaning their homes, and um, but it's not an essential. And so I don't think they fall under that category yet. Um, Dr. Solorio Cortez, is that your understanding as well? I agree with you. I agree. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, we have Whitney Kim Law who asks, how often does a county get a new shipment of vaccine doses? And I think we've answered that. Right now it's day to day, sometimes hour to hour. Um, okay, we have Steve Shepard who asks, what specifically is Santa Clara County doing to get an adequate supply of vaccines? Anything uh, you want to add to that, Dr. Solorio, for this? Not specifically. I think it's it's a higher level, um, you know, issue, and and the the solution to that is I think it 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 takes a lot of stakeholders on the level of um, the executive and supervisors and and leaders. Yeah, and the only thing I'll add to that is I know that Cindy Chavez held a press conference last week on Thursday. Um, you know, getting again the different leaders together and demanding um, that we are able to keep uh, the control of our vaccines as, we, as we've been doing a good job here in Santa Clara County. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to that. And so, yes, our um, our leaders, we get to continue to be vocal um, as to what we need here in Santa Clara County. So join the support. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have Lenny San who says, when will below 65 to 50 get uh, the vaccine? Well, I think the, the question means like no health issues and 50 to 65. So, I mean, we're still at the tier of people with conditions, you know, six, um, 18 to 65. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, and it's going back to the supplies um, and also, you know, basing on, on the recent uh, President Biden, you know, um, address. So, you know, I'm being hopeful that uh, next month, being April, um, there'll be a, a, a high upswing of supply. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and then we have Jody who's saying, short of second dose vaccine, friend got denied appointment canceled last week because they were short of supply, yes. Um, okay, let's go down. Um, okay, there are no Santa Clara County zip codes in the lowest quartile of the Healthy Places Index. Do you consider this to be equitable? If so, why? If not, what is being done to address this? Um, and I have my thoughts. I don't know if uh, any one of you want to answer this? I mean, I think you kind of answered it with um, uh, Supervisor Chavez and uh, our leaders, you know, trying to meet, I, I believe, with, you know, Governor Newsom and um, the suppliers just to um, ask that question and see if there's any, any other ways that we could um, um, get the supply. Because it's, it, you're, and the question is right, it leaves people out. And I think um, our leaders have stood up and um, asked that question and, and uh, I think, um, you know, working with the governor, um, trying to come up with a solution that's going to, um, you know, benefit us. Thank you. Um, and then we have, are you sure about unincorporated? How does that follow state guidelines? And I'm not sure. Um, did anybody, Julie, did you mention unincorporated in your presentation? So I think that was to you. I did, Eric. Um, I was specifically referencing the um, eligibility criteria for the isolation and quarantine support program. This is separate from vaccinations. Our program um, provides services, including motel placement, grocery delivery, and also financial assistance to those who have either been diagnosed with COVID or have had an exposure and been told to quarantine. Anybody in unincorporated Santa Clara County qualifies um, for those services. And the um, hotline is on the screen. If you are in need of assistance because you've been impacted negatively by COVID, lost income, or a resident within unincorporated Santa Clara County, please give us a call. And we will, uh, we've got coordinators on standby uh, who can assist with your application. Thank you, Julie. And we have Irma Navarro who asks, my son has Kaiser, 
and he was able to get the vaccine the next day in San Jose using their online site. Sorry, she's informing us. Thank you, Irma. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then we have Steve Shepard who says, who asks, is the county's refusal to sign the Blue Shield contract affecting the vaccine supply? And I, I can respond with um, no, uh, we don't think so. And um, we, what we know is that other zip codes who have higher need um, it's, it's how the effect, how it's affecting our vaccine dosages. Uh, do you know? Yeah. Is that what you understand too, Dr. Solario Cortez? Agree with you. Pretty much agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Red House Raquel asks, um, is it required to have Kaiser Health Insurance or is it open to the public? So I'm assuming she's asking um, the person who says that they got a vaccine. So Kaiser will vaccinate Kaiser patients. Right. Right. Um, county is open to everyone, um, but unfortunately right now um, they're only vaccinating, county's vaccinating the second dose, making those a priority. Um, thank you, Irma, for that information. We have Lee Ann Tanner who says, now it's anyone that no wrong door policy to get the vaccine from any provider. Um, I'm assuming she's referring to our no wrong door and is wondering if we are following that. Unfortunately, at this time, again, because of the number of vaccines, we are um, prioritizing those that are getting their second dose. Um, Dr. Solorio Cortez, do you want to add to that? Nothing to add. Thank you. We have Kevin Gaitan Baez. Eric Sanji, can you clarify your question per state law? County government is responsible for serving unincorporated areas, thus this program should especially serve unincorporated areas since the county is responsible for those areas. And you helped answer that, Julie, thank you. Anything you wanna add before we move on from that? Kevin is one of our IQ support coordinators awesome. and is very knowledgeable. And should um, anybody call and get connected with, with Kevin, he's a great resource and a very kind person. <laughs> nice. And I'm gonna go through the questions. Let's see, Eric Sanji. I heard the presenter say that all residents of unincorporated areas were eligible. Do they mean that they have the same eligibility as those who live in the unincorporated? Okay, I know we've answered that. And I think we made it pretty clear, thank you. Um, let's see, I'm going through the questions. Lenny San um, asks, how come some young adults without any health problems get the vaccine? when they accompany their elderly family. Mr. Solorio Cortez. Um, the, it's more of the, the definition of a caregiver. So if, if, if a family member, mom and dad, go for the vaccine and son, daughter, or, or grandson, granddaughter is the primary you know, caregiver, then you know, it, by that definition would meet criteria of a um, um, a healthcare provider, caregiver. It's not, you know, set in stone that, again, we go back to the, to, you know, signing up and, 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 and signing the, or clicking the box that uh, you do meet criteria for that tier. And by you being a caregiver for that, you know, family member, um, we do want to, you know, protect you too as well uh, with the vaccine. So you will meet criteria uh, under that. Thank you. And we have Yi Chen who's saying, I will be 65 years old next month. Where shall I get shot of COVID-19 vaccines in Milpitas, Santa Clara County? So I, I, I'll just repeat that unfortunately right now we're not taking first dose um, and hopefully that changes soon. Um, so right now, unfortunately there's nowhere uh, well, I wouldn't say nowhere, but if you're a Kaiser patient, then you can make an appointment with Kaiser or a uh, private insurance provider. Definitely contact your private insurance provider. Otherwise, to Santa Clara County, we are um, waiting for um, more vaccines to do the first dose. And we're prioritizing the second dose at this time. Um, we have Maribel, who um, is asking for Espanol, por favor. 
And I'll just tell her in Spanish real quick. Margarita, a las 7 de la noche tendremos esta misma información en nuestro canal de español. So at 7 p.m. tonight, if any of you have any Spanish speakers in your families or community, please let them know we'll have the same presentation on our Spanish uh, Facebook channel. Um, Lee Ann Tanner, do we know the re reasons for why we are not getting the vaccine supply? No. Oh, well, we mentioned it already. Um, again, we understand that certain zip codes who have higher need are the ones getting vaccines. Gabriel Martinez, I am a liver transplant, transplant recipient. Is it safe to get the vaccine, doctor? That's a very excellent um, question. Uh, I would um, advise you to talk to your healthcare provider you know, be a primary care doc or um, the doctor um, who's following the transplant. But in general, uh, as a general statement, um, you should be able to um, get the vaccine. When it comes to, you know, medications or treatments that suppress your immune system, or basically saying that lowers down your immune system, I, I think we're more worried about active, like chemotherapy, um, um, a medic um, treatment. So in, the, in those situations, we highly um, encourage you to speak to your oncologist to uh, make sure that it is okay um, to get the vaccine. But as a, as a blanket statement, um, almost um, almost everyone should be should, who has a transplant should be able to you know get the vaccine be a Moderna, Pfizer, or, or Johnson and Johnson, uh, and also making sure that then there's no uh, allergies to the to the products in those vaccines um and even so let me step back people that have severe allergies to let's say you know nuts bees that doesn't disqualify you for a vaccine vaccine pretty much it, it just means that instead of observing you for 15 minutes we're going to observe you for 30 minutes uh, as a an add on to the to the question just uh, going back to the fact that we believe that um all three vaccines are um, safe, safe and effective in, in, in a wide range of um, patient population, including uh, individuals such as, such as yourself with an um, organ transplant. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and then we have uh, Red House Raquel. I'm not sure what IHS um, means, stands for, so I'm going to ask her if she can because I have my own thoughts of what that stands for, but I want to make sure that I'm understanding her question. Uh, Red House Raquel, if you can put in what IHS um, stands for, and then we'll go ahead and come back and answer your question if you can put it on the comments. Lori Renois, uh, my husband is being treated for AFib. Is that qualifying, doctor? I want to say yes, only because most of the time or many of the times atrial fibrillation is associated with cardiomyopathy the heart disease that you know we have mentioned previously so again going back to encourage you to talk to the your healthcare um, provider but it, it sounds like it could be and again it gets very detailed um and i, and I would say you know um a lot of this is going to be like you know, slam dunk. It is what it is. What it is on the, on the diagnosis, but there there are going to be gray areas with um, certain conditions. So, definitely encourage you to um to speak to your your doctor. Great, thank you. Um, and then we have Kirk Varton who is asking why is the county suggesting to get a COVID test after being vaccinated, doctor? As I'm aware, I don't think I haven't. You know, I, I've, I'm I'm one of the physician um, reviewers at our Gilroy uh, Center and I could, you know, attest, you know, tell you that we're not telling our uh, people that we would vaccinate to be tested one day, two days, three days after. I mean, so, uh, the answer is no. Yes, you know, if a patient, uh, if a person has symptoms and this comes, you know, for everyone, um, symptoms in, uh, consistent with COVID should, you know, alert the healthcare provider um, to to get tested uh, for COVID. Um, people that have, have been vaccinated, um, it's less likely, again, that's the whole purpose and the, the you know, well, what we're saying, that it, it's so efficient, um, it's so protective that, you know, 
very unlikely that a vaccinated person is going to um, uh, develop COVID, but it, it, it could happen. So I'm, I go back to the fact that if any symptoms are, um, are present of COVID, then you should be tested. But uh, getting the vaccine doesn't mean that you we re- we're we're recommended to be tested. No, so that's that's not um, the truth. Thank you. And we have Sonia Tetnowski here, who is the director of the Indian Health Center, um, which I thought might be the organization the previous person was asking. So I'm glad she's there to answer. Thank you, Sonia, for uh, being here um, and helping answer that question. Uh, Red House Raquel, I hope that we are um, taking the time to acknowledge your question and your needs. So please feel free if it's not Indian Health Center, um, then that you put it in there so we can take the time to answer that. Thank you. Lee and Tanner says thanks. Karina, um, let, Karina yes. let me just add on. Um, for the question about you know getting tested, again, um, I was talking more about if you have symptoms, but me as a healthcare provider, you know, doctor, vaccinated, done, did all that, but you know, we're still as healthcare providers, and it kind of it goes back to where I, I was saying that it, it's not you know a hundred percent, and it's it almost is there. It could happen. For so for you know that reason and for us being you know close to patients, we're still being tested every. I mean that's a recommendation to be tested every two weeks. So I, I think as, as it's a follow up to the to the question. I think um, that individual was asking, you know, get vaccinated. You know, I'm a healthcare provider. Do I still need to be um, um, uh, tested? And and for asymptomatic transmission and such, for example, in us in the county, we we do uh, employees still get tested. And it's for safety again, because the studies, although the Johnson and Johnson does show a little bit more information on the the stoppage of transmission asymptomatically, meaning having no symptoms, that it's it, it's it's going to be helpful. Uh, we don't have the same data for Moderna, Pfizer. That's coming out. Um, I, I would say in the next few months or weeks. And it's for that reason that um, the CDC still recommends that you know we wear wear a mask because um, you know the asymptomatic you know, transmission possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, CDC, and I, wanna, I don't want to confuse people. CDC did say that you're able to take off your mask if you're around someone that's um, already been vaccinated uh, vaccinated as well, but in, in, in only one household. But in general, um, you know, masks are still being um, even after vaccination when you are in public. And it, um, so, yeah, I will leave it as that. At that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have... Kaitlyn Courtney, who's asking, what will, will Santa Clara County prioritize critical manufacturing soon? We know Solano County has prioritized this group. Yeah, we don't know exactly when um, the next uh, group will be prioritized um, or when we'll move on to the next group. Um, I also have a, I see a question down here from Rosemary Porras, who's asking about her husband who's an electrician. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an exact timeline as to when those groups will be um, eligible um, at this time. Uh, we have Carl Pavri, who says, New York and New Jersey have given vaccines to so many younger folks. Why are we so slow? Doctor, do you have anything? No, I mean, I, I, I think it, it boils down to the, the the supply. You know, it's supply and and you know where you know we're getting and and as you as you mentioned, it's a pretty much you know day by day, week by week um, update and when we get the rec- when we get the supply. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Dr. Solorio Cortez, um, just in regards to the children, I understand that um, some vaccines are also getting tested. Um, for to make sure that they're safe for children, is that true? That might be slowing down, maybe the um, amount that we're getting, or as fast. You know, I know we all want our children vaccinated, but maybe I, I, I don't. I think that's that's a separate. Um, you know, and, and I'm I'm excited about it. It's a separate issue in terms okay. of like the studies. You know, with Moderna, Pfizer, those are you know you know being done, but that that's um, I don't think that's the that, that would halt the supply. I think it's more of the you know the the making the products that and and the the processes you know of who gets you know what again going back you know to the zip codes 
what zip codes get it, what counties get it, what states get it. I mean, I understand totally the question about, you know, there's um, inequities or, 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 or differences in allocation by state in, in, in the U.S. So the, it's a valid question of like, why, why is it? And, you know, um, I don't, I'm, you know, going back to, uh, um, I mean, I wish I had the answer, but I think there's, it, as you mentioned before, too, so many moving parts. And I think, you know, um, you know, our, and I, I have a lot of confidence in our um, uh, supervisors and executives that we're doing our best to, um, to uh, be equal at, to other states. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I know I see Raquel, uh, Red House Raquel came back and um, she's referring to the Indian um, Health Services. Um, which Sonia did put on here. If yes, then Indian Health Center of Santa Clara Valley can support the American Indian and Alaska Alaskan Native in Santa Clara County. Please feel free to reach out to us. So if you fall under that um, category, feel free to reach out to the Indian Health Center. Um, thank you all out there doing such a great job. Um, and that's the center that I thought she was talking about, but I didn't want to make any. Uh, Assumption. So thank you, Red House Raquel, for uh, confirming that. Um, Josette Madrid's in hope support services might be an act that got cut off. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, we have Yi Chen. Why did these people get first dose of COVID 19 vaccine to get second dose? If they have first dose, then they are able to produce some antibodies already to protect them. Dr. You're right. I mean, that's a very good question. I mean, there are, you're making antibodies, you know, after the first dose of um, Moderna, Pfizer, and again, also um, Johnson & Johnson. So, for example, Moderna, Pfizer, um, after one month after the first dose, you're at, you know, like the studies do show that it's like 70% um, effectiveness. And after your second dose, two weeks after, you're at ninety five percent, so it's it's a valid question. Like, well, if you're seventy percent, why not just you know do the first dose, Moderna, Pfizer, get the seventy percent, you're protected, and then you know wait two weeks, three weeks later for your other dose, and but your your second dose allows it to another person who's zero percent. It's it's a it's a valid point. It's a val and I think even scientists, you know, uh, um, are. are uh, there's studies coming out. There's um, discussion, debate. You know, you got you know top-notch uh, researchers at Harvard, Yale, UCSF who 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 get down and and talk about this. And also because you know COVID-19 is such an you know it's 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 new. It's it's changed things. So with it also comes you know as it, as you mentioned, Karina, it's it's a day by day, um, you know, uh, thing that we're in, and we as leaders have to figure out you know what's the best thing to do. So even though, and I know, I know I went in, all around in circles, but getting to the point that even knowing you're 70%, the studies, CDC still recommends that you need your second dose to be at 95%. And for that reason, um, uh, we're, we're still, we're going to, you know, vaccinate those that need the second dose um, um, at that point and not, you know, not use that second dose for a first dose because it's going against what uh, the CDC and the FDA recommended when it was approved. Um, definitely, you know, if, if things are getting um, worse with supply, you know, I have faith in our in leaders and going back to, you know, Dr. Fauci and figuring out, well, okay, do we need, is it okay? Do studies, have, have studies told us definitively that we could get away with just doing one vaccine for now just to vaccine other individuals? Then that'll be the case in the future if, you know, studies do show that. But at this point, we cannot say that. We we got to do the second dose. And unfortunately, you're right. And it leaves people out until, you know, we get more supply. But it's, it's a very, it's a very um, excellent question that even you'll, you'll, you'll find um, esteemed um, infectious diseases people and doctors um, who will, will make that argument as well. Why not just, you know, give one dose and then wait until we get more supply so that we're all, we're all at 70%, but it's not the case. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna try to get through all the questions. I don't know if we will, but um, know that we're doing our best. 
Um, so I see, do you have any forecast to the county moving into orange tier? Will this impact vaccination process? So do we have forecasts? We do, we see our numbers, you know, uh, as a county getting better. Uh, and so that's great. Do I have a timeline? No, because again, just like we saw a year ago, right? The numbers can change um, moment to moment. So, uh, but hopefully um, we're, we're moving in the right direction as a county. Um, and will it impact the vaccination process? That won't. Um, unfortunately, we are waiting for the number of vaccines coming down um, and provided to us at this time. So um, Arlene Rodriguez says, when a person gets the first dose, do they have to go back to the same place to get the second dose? That same place does not have any appointments. It's a very good, it's a very good question. I think the general, very good point in terms of like, you know, can, we, can I get Moderna now? And, you know, I go to the, to, for my second dose and, you know, um, that place has Pfizer. Can I do Pfizer? No, you can't do, you can um, mix them up. But if you go to one place with Moderna and Gilroy and in one month you're set up for your your 28th, I mean, after 28 days, you have your second dose set up at, at Levi Stadium and it's a Moderna, that's very allowable. Um, just recently in Gilroy, I had a, a patient who had the first dose in, um, in Hawaii for a Moderna and we gave that individual the Moderna here in, um, in Gilroy. So as long as you keep it the same series, meaning the same type, you're good. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the protocol for no-show appointments to ensure there are no wasted vaccines? So right now, um, I know that, uh, I, well, I don't know, Dr. Rodrigo Cortez, what is it there at your site? Well, pretty much right now, it's like the, it's all second doses. So for the most part, people are, are showing up. It, it is their second dose. And there are no, there are no, um, you know, first time, you know, um, um, first, first shot uh, appointments. So the no show rate is uh, pretty low right now because they're all second doses. Yeah. Thank you. And the, we have Monica Lynn and a couple of others who are re uh, responding to her. There are many 16 to 17 year olds working at high traffic fast food restaurants and other food services, they should be eligible to get the vaccine now. Um, are they, Dr. Solorio Cortez? You know, above, as long as you fit the, the tier, and we're talking about Pfizer, again, very important, Pfizer is the only one that's 16 and above. The other two, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, are 18 and above. So that, that's a very um, it's a very good question, and it, it gets to the details of who could, you know, who's, it, who's in that tier, and which vaccine will be most, most appropriate. Great. And so um, I see the last question here, and we've uh, then gone through them all. Um, is there a way to check whether the sites are doing Moderna or Pfizer? And there's not, because as we get the allotments, we're getting them out. Um, Dr. Zolorio, anything different on that? No, nothing to add. I, I yeah. agree with it. Okay. And so thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, Dr. Gerardo Solorio Cortez, hope you had some water there because I know you were answering many of them. Julie Ramirez, thank you so much for your presentation, the resources that your organization, your um, you know team is providing uh, that are much needed. And so thank you both for what you do for our community, especially those that are highest impacted. And I look forward to continuing to serve the community along your side. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Thank everyone. Thank you, my pleasure. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.